Learning to code can be like having a superpower. Obviously not like getting bitten by a radioactive spider or anything, but it can really change your life in terms of up-leveling your skill set and allowing you to either get a better job, to become an entrepreneur, and even to fix your parents' computer. But if you decide to learn to code, how will you use that newly acquired skill set? In this video, I'm gonna go through all of the different ways I've heard of people making money through coding. There's about 12 of them in all. Some of these are obvious and some are a bit of a stretch, but if you stick around till the end, I'll tell you about how I would decide which one to pursue. Number one is salaried employment. This is working full-time at a tech company or even a non-tech company that just needs software built. There's a lot of advantages to this approach. Obviously the upsides are things like a steady income and any benefits you receive from the job. The downside, of course, is the schedule, the lack of freedom. Do you need to be in a certain place at a certain time? Do you need to work the proverbial nine to five? Do you need to sit in traffic to get to that job? Salaried employment, while it comes with the benefits you know, of the income and other things, it's probably one of the most restrictive ways that you can make money with code. And some people consider it the least risky, but it isn't because layoffs happen all the time. And if you're in charge of your income, you can tend to have more control over growing that and over maintaining it even in economic downturns versus someday your manager shows up with a pink slip and you're escorted out the door with a box of your belongings. I've had it happen to many friends of mine. So I don't consider salaried employment a permanent arrangement, but it is a way to make quite a bit of money on a consistent basis. Option number two is freelancing. This is finding your own clients or using a marketplace like Upwork, maybe Fiverr. Although Fiverr developer, I don't know, maybe dip your toe in the water on Fiverr, but realistically a place like Upwork or freelancing through an agency or a micro agency, which I'll define later. Or the optimal way is to find your own clients and that's the way that you can bill the most. As a freelancer, the work comes and goes. Sometimes you'll be super busy, 50, 60 hours a week, one week, and the next week you might not have anything to do. So what I've found as folks want to try to freelance is they do use one of those marketplaces, I already named what, Fiverr, Upwork, there's freelancer.com, there's a handful of others. And you can pick up a few hours here or there, there's a lot of flexibility. Of course, the downside is the ebb and flow of work. If you can source your own work where someone needs an entire web application built, I'm assuming you're a web developer, or they need an entire mobile app, built if you're an iOS or Android developer. That can keep you busy for several months and you can obviously make pretty good margin at it, but being a freelancer is feast or famine. I did it for many years and while I enjoyed it and it provided me with a lot of freedom, I can't imagine doing that for an entire career. I know there are folks out there that do it, but just the ebb and flow and the ups and downs and having to learn new tech all the time can get old over time. The third way to make money coding is to start a software development agency. I used the term micro agency earlier. And what I mean by that is you are the principal. You're the head of sales. You are writing the code to start with. And then you start finding freelancers to augment your hours because at a certain point you get fully booked with everything you're doing. And if you can pay freelancers 30, 40, $50 an hour, but you're able to bill hundred dollars or 150 an hour, there can be a nice margin there, especially if you keep them as contractors. Once you bring them on a salary, of course, you have this nut that you have to crack each month and you could potentially go upside down, paying out more salary than you are taking in. So micro agency, when I think about it, it means it's a single person agency, but you may have two, three, five people working for you who are doing anything from writing code to designing, and you are in charge of bringing in the work and getting it done, and you're hiring out several contractors. Now beyond micro agency, you of course can hire full-time people. It just becomes more of a business. The traditional agency model is to find large companies who need work done, and then you do the project management and you hire all the folks that need to get it done. I know that for my podcast startup, for so the rest of us, we needed someone to do some WordPress work for us, and we found Codable.io, which is kind of like an agency, but I, I think it's more like everyone's a contractor. I don't actually know how they're structured internally, but that is a maybe a new way of thinking or a new type of business model that you could build around this. And I, I've been thinking, is there an opportunity to be the dev agency that moves no code to code or vice versa, as we've seen in, in some of our videos, but who is a no code expert and can either build stuff in no code or migrate you from no code to code? I think if I were gonna do this and build an agency, I would cater to a specific niche where I could refine and reuse my own frameworks, much like we saw Brian Castle do years ago with Restaurant Engine. And the biggest struggle I think of building an agency is you have to build a funnel of new leads because like freelancing, work is constantly running out. 
The fourth way to make money with coding is to build a productized service. That's where you charge a monthly subscription and you have folks doing something. Maybe it's video editing, maybe it's audio editing, maybe it's tweaks to WordPress websites. There's all kinds of things that you can productize in a productized service. Of course, for the purposes of this video, we're talking about coding. Examples of this have included WP Curve, which sold to GoDaddy. It was unlimited WordPress site updates for a monthly subscription. Or you can do one-time services where they're productized, but they aren't subscriptions. So Knapsack Creative designs and builds a Squarespace website in a couple of days. They built several websites for me. And the reason they're productized is it's a flat fee and you get a flat result. And they do a really good job and they're really specifically good at one thing. And they've optimized for that and they can build it very quickly and thus offer it at a good price. The fifth way to make money coding is to build custom applications or plugins for marketplaces. This is what I call a step one business. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll know what that is. If you don't, you can Google the stair step method of entrepreneurship. In fact, at MicroConf, we've assembled a list of over 75 marketplaces that you can build on at microconf.com slash marketplaces. An example of a marketplace is monday.com, who's the sponsor of this video. When folks ask me about starting their first SaaS, I recommend they build an app or an extension on top of an existing product like monday.com, which already has over 186,000 customers across more than 200 industries. 90% of their large paying accounts have at least one app installed, which is why I think there's a lot of opportunity to build SaaS on top of the platform. If you aren't familiar, monday.com is a versatile platform that enables business owners and teams of all sorts to streamline their work using their work management, sales CRM, and dev products. They have an app marketplace where developers like you can build and charge good money for apps that extend the functionality of the platform. To learn more about the types of customers that you might find in the marketplace, the team has put together an ebook that lays out their core user groups, the job titles they'll often have, their pain points, and use cases for the platform. It's a treasure trove of customer research laid out for you, and you can get it for free. To get your copy, head over to the link below, fill out the form, and sign up for a developer account. Thanks to monday.com for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. The sixth way to make money with coding is to teach people how to code online. This is where you build courses, tutorials, and other educational materials, and you sell them online as one-time sales or through paid subscriptions. Through my accelerator, Tiny Seed, I've invested in Frontend Mentor. They're a good example of this. Lane at boot.dev has been on my podcast, Startups for the Rest of Us. Boot.dev is another good example. If you're comfortable in front of a camera or recording screencasts, this can be a good way to separate yourself from the rest of the pack and build an asset that can sell over and over. The seventh way to make money coding is offering private coding classes online or even in person. So CodeMentor.io is an example of a business that has been built by teaching people to code online. And could you teach one-on-one -on -one or even one-to-many classes locally, right? Through tutoring, through college prep, or just market it. Market it on Facebook Marketplace or wherever you think people will want to learn to code. You start up your own thing and you teach them. The eighth way to make money with coding is to get into tech blogging and or content marketing. People will pay good money. You can either try to build your own audience and monetize it through eBooks or courses, or frankly, people will pay you good money to write technical blog posts, tutorials, email newsletter, or eBooks on programming topics. So draft.dev by Carl Hughes creates technical content for other brands via a productized service. And I know several folks who've used draft.dev and they pay a solid price for what Carl offers. And it's a great business that he's built around building technical content. But in order to write this content, you need to know how to code. And as I said, you can also monetize through ads, sponsorships, or selling other things. Realistically, the quickest way there, the fast way there is to productize this and to do writing for folks who are doing content marketing. The ninth way to make money coding is to create a YouTube channel, potentially for a specific language. One good example of this is Programming with Mosh. You can check them out on YouTube and Theo at t3.gg. The 10th way to make money coding is to create themes or frameworks for content management systems like WordPress or platforms like Shopify or Squarespace. These are one-time sales. Examples of this that have been very successful include Tailwind CSS by Adam Wathen and back in the day Woo Themes, which became WooCommerce, which sold to Automatic or go on any of the theme marketplaces. Look at ThemeForest where people are selling things for five, 10, $50. And if you get enough traffic and you get enough one-time sales, you can make a decent amount of money. The 11th way to make money with code is developing mobile apps, creating and selling your own apps on marketplaces like the Apple App Store or Google Play. 
I would avoid it. I don't like one-time sales, and this space is much more B2C than I'd be comfortable with, but I do know some folks in our community who have done it. One example of this is Mate Kovac in the MicroConf community. He built teleprompter.com. And the 12th and final way, it's not final, you know there's others, but the 12th way that I wanna call out is building SaaS products. That's what this channel is all about. Developing and launching software as a service products that users subscribe to, businesses subscribe to, and they pay you ongoing revenue. And obviously if you follow the channel, you figured this was coming, but I put it last because I don't think building a SaaS is the typical path to making money with coding. I think it's a goal of a lot of people, but it's complicated to do. And if you're six months into learning how to code, building a SaaS product is usually not the thing you wanna do, which is I talk so much about the stair-step method of entrepreneurship. Now, which of these should you pursue? So that depends. What I would do is I would look at your overall skill set to see if there's any of these that overlaps with your natural interests and your current ability. So do you have any unfair advantages that make you uniquely suited for any of the above? Do you have any additional skills that you can add to your coding ability to give you a leg up? If you're great at being on camera or recording screencasts, you have a great personality, maybe you think about recording video courses. If you're good in a room, maybe you think about doing in-person instruction and so on. Really, you should think about what are your goals? To pay off your bills, just to make some side money, take an extra trip next year. As you look to make money through coding, you should probably be asking yourself a very simple question that has some huge implications. It's a bit more than I can explain here. So go ahead and watch this video next to get the question you should be asking yourself and hear my thoughts on why you ought to be asking it before you start a new business. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time.